Welcome back, everybody. This is Desk Careers Digital Spotlight, where we are meeting professionals and bringing them back to Dubai English Speaking College. I'm very excited to be bringing Chef Sperros here with us today, and he's going to be talking about his career in the culinary sciences and give us all of his advice for any aspiring chef out there wanting to learn a little bit more about the world of food. Welcome, Chef Sperros. How are you today? Hello, Maria. I'm very good. It's my pleasure actually to meeting you. And I'm very excited, you know, like to talk today for an interview and give all the good feedback for all our friends are waiting there to be excited for the kitchen, for the food, for the philosophy and the way how I'm running. And I'm, I have my own philosophy for running my own restaurants and the restaurants and around the world. Sounds and let's fantastic. talk a little bit about that. Sounds great. So let's start right at the beginning. Who is uh, Chef Sperhos and where do you come from? I'm, from, I'm coming from Greece, uh, from a small, small village in the Peloponnese area where I grow up and after this I have like moved forward for so many different places. And did you al always know that this is what you wanted to be doing? Yes, actually I was always know I want to be a chef after when I was like 12 years old, 11 years old, my family, they opened a small hotel and restaurant in Greece, uh, below like the mountain of the ski center. Then for this time, I started to love the cooking and the hospitality because cooking is passion and it's not only just go to the pot and cooking, but it's like in general, the hospitality is something you have it or you don't have it. Sounds so great. So take us through a typical day of being a chef. One difficult day to be a chef? A typical day, like a, a, a normal day. day. Yeah. yeah, okay. A typical day of, to be a chef. Um, you wake up in the morning with a very, very big stress, with phone calls and so many phone calls like uh, around you, then you're jumping over the bed and you start the day. How you start the day? The first thing you're doing, like usually, you know, the most of the chefs like around the world and who is like really passionate and love the products, he's going and he's collecting these products usually like four to five times per week. Like example, me, uh, I will wake up very, very early. Then I have to go like around three times per week to choose my own fish, my own meat in the market or in my main suppliers I have, but I want to see the product before receiving my restaurant. Then... After this, we we're gonna go forward to the restaurant. Sometimes starts very early, sometimes a little bit later. Then usually I go to the restaurant very, very early and the most typical chefs, this is what they're doing. Then after the meat products, you go straight to the restaurant. You start to see the products and work a little bit about around that. You do your own mise en place, like the preparation. And after the preparation, like you brief your team, you give some trainings all this and the operation slow, slow starts. Obviously, together with all that, you have to answer a million of phone calls, emails, and be like, uh, obviously you have your assistants, they overtaking like a few of these stuff because the typical chefs usually is in the kitchen. In the time, you know, like the team need them to support them all together, to give them new taste and new methods, training by daily basis. Then like this, you can make like, the team more motivated. After that, the customers, they were gonna arrive in the restaurant and you're gonna start to dealing with the customers. Uh, you have like, obviously your briefing daily when before, sorry, before the customers actually arrive, you have all the briefing daily with the waiters, with the people, you know, like actually they always taking care of the customers in outside of the kitchen because you have to explain them the new dishes, you have to explain them everything what is came, the dish of the day, the fish of the day and everything. Then after that, you start dealing with your own customers, the customers coming, the special request, things that are gonna come, um, you know, over like they were gonna request, like uh, people with allergies, you will always take special care and you're gonna have actually your operation with all the customers and the team to running in like perfect flu and like to be perfect. And how it's finishing, it's finishing again back to the computer with the special orders we need for the next day, with the phone calls and the emails you have no time to answer the afternoon, to brief your team, 
to, uh, to write down like all the checklists for the next day. Check all your kitchen, how is everything, hygiene and everybody, how it is, like all your team, how they find out the day. This is actually what I'm doing. I'm always have like my team very close to me because it's my hands, like two hands, they can do anything, but a big team and the motivation of them. And when you build up beautiful team, you can do anything what you like in your restaurant and with a small amount of people, you can run a beautiful business, beautiful dishes in the daily base. You sit in the office, you're answering all the emails and the day is almost there. You just go back home, relax, and let's go for the next day. Amazing. First of all, it sounds like a really busy day. And for anybody listening to this, any aspiring chefs out there, I'm almost sure that they didn't really understand all these other things that you do as a chef. So for example, I heard you say, I have to wake up really early in the morning and then I have to go and see where my fish is and choose it and my meat and my, and my products before they get delivered to the restaurant. So how did you learn how to do this? And what would you say to anyone wanting to be a chef that they should be learning now before they go down this profession? Beautiful. Uh, the most important thing I have to say to the people, they want to start with this career. I was gonna start for that because it's very important. And to be a chef, they have to have very big love for what they're doing. When you love to be a chef and when you love the kitchen and you have to put in your mind, it's not like how is exactly showing in the master chef, we're just doing one dish and everything is all right. It's a very tough work. It's a work you have to give a lot of passion, a lot of time in your life because you have to read. You, like if you really want to be a succeed person, like you have to really, really, really motivate yourself to be a hard days and very beautiful days. Now for everything like how the people, like I used to wake up the morning and go to just pick up like my fish and my seafood and my meat because the reason is sometimes I'm not like really like it when my restaurant is coming the fish and I don't really like it and I have to go back and forward because it's like double job. Obviously the best quality, every chef he want the best quality for his restaurant then obviously I will go to the market. How I learn all this to do all that stuff is my family, they have a butchery in Greece. Then we are for a small family farm and uh, like they have, they're growing up like all this uh, lamp and you know, the farms, everything. Then they have the butchery. Then they have teach me a lot of things about the meat. Then this is the only thing I don't really scare. And for the seafood, obviously, and the fish, I'm from Greece, then I have learned for the time I was like 17, 18, my chef, he still, he was calling me this time. He was like, okay, wake up. It's like 5.30. Then we was going like to the port, you know, in, uh, in Athens, then was like going there, like in the fish market, like, you know, outside it was still dark. And I was like, oh my God, why he's calling me like to wake up so early and to have to do, why is so important? But guys, yes, this is very, very important because as a chef, if you have the beautiful product, you can make something amazing. If your product is not very good, very fresh or something like that, you cannot do anything, you know? The chef is the product. If I choose the best products, I can have the best dish and the most beautiful dish in the earth with the flavor and the freshness. And this is what it's all about to be a chef. To love what you're doing, but to collect the best and the most beautiful products for small farms, organic farms, and things you know somebody else he cannot find this is how you're gonna be somebody very you can say very realistic chef and somebody he can be like very to motivate this team and to give the beautiful things you know to walk around that fantastic so i'm assuming networking is very very important for a chef yeah obviously how do you, it's very important how do you network with the different people that you need to bring this amazing food to your clients? Okay, this is actually the most hard things you can say around the world because uh, how you network with the people, like need a lot of patience, you know, like to find the right people in the right time and the people, you know, they're gonna bring you the best product, you will trust them enough because 
don't let's don't forget you know my team is not only the people is in the restaurant one good chef obviously you can train them and you can like find a way like to have him in the to be the right hand of you but let's don't forget how much important is the people like from bringing like the suppliers or the people you know the inputting the seafood and the fish it needs a lot of time it needs a lot of patience you will call friends of you like executive chefs also and you will walk around you have to like really searching in daily base what kind of products they're coming for where they're coming and for me this is very important how like we say previously very important where is from coming the product because you don't need products like to be like not fresh not you know sexy how i'm calling in my kitchen and my team i say choose the sexiest product in the world and sexiest product is mean everything included that the network is hard but you will gonna find it if you give a lot of time for that amazing people they take sometimes us people they're coming to you actually you know some suppliers they're coming to you but to have the real connection with them like you have to go you have to visit the market you have to meet them you have to visit like many many farms like now in dubai we have beautiful organic farms around in dubai and we can use these amazing products then you need time for all that brilliant so you really have to get outside your comfort zone to meet all these different professionals that will help you fabulous exactly so i also heard you talking about uh types of business skills that you have as a chef and most often i think those skills are overlooked by the youth they don't really they don't really expect that that would be important if they love to to cook and to be a chef how would you say or what would you say a young person should be learning about business if they want to be a chef very 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 important to, to be a good chef and to know to do in a beautiful dish is absolutely fine and is the most important thing in your work but you have to be it's like you can say 50 percent you can be a beautiful chef with a beautiful cooking but the other 50 percent is the management skills you have to have and how is coming the management skills is coming with the experience is coming with the time you're working the young chefs like they're starting today they have to understand <clears throat> it's not enough to cook one beautiful steak but it's enough when you're going to sit down and you're going to start to working everything in the technology what we're using these days and this is mean like to using proper you know the equipment like computers we have to use the computers all the time we have to read we have to explore ourselves we have to travel ourselves in because this is the way how you're going to build up management skills in one college they will going to give you the basic it's like how you build up one building you start for the base and after that you grow up it's the same thing with the chefs one chef you have to start for the base in the college and you don't have to to learn only how one beautiful steak it will gonna be cooked because this you can learn in the restaurant but how you were gonna learn about the business and because you have to obviously do a costing you have to sit down with your owners you have to talk about like how you were gonna develop a restaurant for the scratch how you were gonna fix a beautiful kitchen how you're gonna make a kitchen you know to be you know like running in the proper way like example you know like which direction you have to put all the things in the kitchen which direction you have to hire people because when you become like executive chef like when you are like in the position you have to handle a section is okay but everybody they have to have a vision of to be like you know the best chef in the world with the way of the skills but not the best best chef in the world only for the stamp selling or something like that obviously this is very important but we're running business and when you have to do in the restaurant and not a really coffee shop but in the restaurant the most important thing is like the food right obviously is the taste but obviously it's like how is the feeling of the customer when he's entering the restaurant this is not everything about only the general manager but the chef he have to have the opinion and the touch because he's the artist person in the kitchen right Brilliant. So brilliant. Okay. I have a question. Always really wanted to know, and I know it's something that's come up with some of the youth that I've seen. Why are chefs so angry in the kitchen? Okay. Uh, I'm one of that chef who is very angry in the kitchen. I'm one of them. Uh, I will tell you what is the reason, because you have, in the, like, look, all, you know, actually the works around the world. It's also hard 
and it's also easy. For the chef, you have to do so many things together in the same time. When the customers arrive, you have the pressure of the customers. You have obviously always the pressure of the ingredients in the product because sometimes you have to do with the very expensive products and ingredients. You have the pressure of your team if they're ready in the same time. You have the pressure of the servers. You have the pressure of the owners, you know, like to handle in the proper direction everything. And, you know, sometimes the chefs, they're losing this place because you have to have a lot of patience because you have to do for so many things around, but it's the same time. When you have a la carte, the customers, they're coming and they want to eat now. They don't need to wait like till tomorrow, like to serve them one dish, right? Then the biggest pressure starts from there. But obviously, you know, these days we have to change that. We're living in 2020 and people, they have to start to understand what does it mean to control your anger and to control yourself? Because we cannot handle the situation how like 15 years before everybody, they was throwing the pants in the kitchen. They was doing like, you know, all this drama. Now anymore, things is not very comfortable to, to act like that because this means you're not good with yourself. Sounds then, really good. Sounds really good. I like to some love to the people around. Because... I, I like that you've, ad I'd like that you've admitted it, that you fall into that category. Cause I think a lot of chefs, they will either say, Oh no, 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 I don't. But then it's so common. You see it a lot. And I know that young chefs today, you know, they think it's about passion and being so passionate about what you do, but it is about self-control and, and self-awareness. So what tips would you have for any aspiring chef that might have perceived the it's okay to be so angry in the kitchen and you're saying it's not okay anymore we have to do different okay uh because i used to be one of the persons you're know, like exactly in the same situation like screaming and sometimes like be very angry in the kitchen all these things when i was younger like i have to give them like few tips see the things very realistic Take a break for 10 seconds and get out for the kitchen. I mean, you don't need to scream to everybody with the time you are very angry because obviously you have, you are artist person, right? All the chefs, like the artists, they actually, the art and draw, you know, like a beautiful plate, right? Then obviously if you're gonna break this plate, you know, the first press restarts. But guys, come on, we have to understand in 2020, this situation is not working like that. Everybody's human beings and we have to accept them how it is and the mistakes is always there. Then your tips has to be just take a 10 break, 10 seconds break, go out, accept the people how it is. Or, you know, like guys, the most important, just give some love to everybody of your teams, to everybody of your customers. Obviously, you'll have a fun, picky people and you're going to get out of control. But just leave for 10 seconds, do some exercise. I'm like, do things, you know, like to just remove a little bit your anger and make you more happy. But see the positive way, see the positive way of all these people working for you, for the team members, because it's very important, you know, to support our team members. And very important, you know, like to see our customers because our customers, they come into us. Sometimes it's very picky, obviously, but show them with a good way how you can change the world. You change step by step. You cannot change from one day to the second day. Brilliant, brilliant. Talk to us about the different job roles that exist in a kitchen, um, because I think a lot of young people think they're going to graduate from university and become a, a chef. Well, what are the stages and what types of, of importance should a young person pay more attention to if they want and aspire to be a chef? Beautiful. Uh, I think everybody, I'm going to start with... Um, when I started like, my career like 14 years before, I went to one college in Athens and I would say my story to understand everybody. Then I enter in and I was like, oh, I want to be a chef. And one of my teachers, he was around 65 years old. And, you know, like I had already experience for my, my family business, you can say, like the very traditional stuff. But when I be there and somebody 65, 70 years old, he say, hello, you didn't came here to be a chef. You came here to start to be a cook. And what does mean that? You need, guys, like everybody, they have to understand, you need a lot of time, you know, and a lot of patience, you know, to become a chef. 
because everybody thinking when you're gonna finish the college, you're gonna come out, and because you have the theory, the theory, you know, in your mind, you're gonna be somebody like really excited, go out and say, "Wow, I want to do that," and I want to do that. It's not exactly like that. Everybody has to understand they will have very, very tough and rough days in the kitchen for the first days because it's a very hard work. Everybody thinking is no these days. You know, everybody thinking because of social media is very easy work, but Guys, no, it's not easy work at all. It's many, many hours. You will gonna lose your family for many, many months sometimes because you will have to travel with your work if you want to grow up and learn new things. You have to give a lot of passion and love, you know, in the ingredients you're using, like, you know, and all these things that will gonna help you to grow more. Because like when you start to love what are you doing and what you have in front of you, what you're gonna happen is you're gonna create something better. And also, like, you will grow more. Then they have to understand the people. They have to work many, many hours. When you go out for the university, you are not going to be a chef. You are going to be a cook. And you are going to start from somewhere to learn how is a steak. When you are going to cross all the technical, actually, things. But you will never learn everything in your life. Chef is something they have started, but did no end. New techniques coming over, new products coming over. Then somebody he will gonna start as a cook. He will gonna move forward, you know, for the different positions in the kitchen, like you know, social, like a you know, grower. Like you will gonna start from the stewarding. Actually, in Europe, usually you start for stewarding, and sometimes I can say, you know, I'm a little bit like in this way how I'm working still now. Like I have my people, and I have to tell them how they have to respect when they're cooking something to use less quantity of things. But then when you grow and you go one step above, you respect who is below you, right? Then you're gonna start, you know, to be a small in charge for a sections in the kitchen, like the grandma's there, like you're gonna be in the cold kitchen and you're gonna be in charge of the hot kitchen. And when you grow from there, you're gonna start getting like more responsibilities and you're going to be a junior sous chef, you can say. And you are the person, you have to know every and each section, every, everything about how is running the operation and what is going on in the kitchen with the product, the things is coming over, and with your team members. You never forget how important it is to be connected with the people. Because if you are not connected with all these people and you don't support the time, they need your hands. What you're gonna happen is when you grow, you lose everybody. This is mean when you're gonna be, no, you're not gonna be there. What you're gonna happen? You will not have somebody to build up, you know, and like proper and have consistency, right? Then after that, you will gonna become a junior sous chef. Then you have to work very hard for a sous chef position. You start to do costing. You start to learning about how in the proper way of the kitchen we're running, what we're running, we're running costings, we're running uh, like special menus. You have to develop recipes with your chef and give things to your chef daily to try and you know, to develop because sometimes the chefs, they have no time you know, to develop all the recipes in the restaurant. This is the reason you have to have a beautiful team, you know, like to build up how you want and train them. Then they keep forward. And after this, you will gonna become a chef. Sounds great. So what you have to do? You super have to be crazy, how we say before, right? Super, super crazy, excellent. Uh, all right. So, anybody watching right now, this is uh, Chef Spethos. Tell us, outside of the kitchen, what other types of jobs can a chef do? Oh my God. Okay. Let me let me say a few things. What I'm doing actually, the last, I think, uh, one and a half year, two years. Guys, to be a chef is beautiful and to love and have passion for the food is amazing. One thing you have to do, like in these days, because we live in 2020s, like what we have to do is like we have to support like with the marketing way our job. And what does mean that when you do something beautiful, like as a chef example, what I'm doing these days is like my social media I'm really supporting. I'm doing videos and cooking with easy recipes to find people in the YouTube they can do at home. I'm doing demonstrations and cooking classes 
I have done for a few universities. I have done for a few schools, and I'm doing many, many cooking classes for kids because I love kids. They're always listening. They're not with the iPhones, you know, like around. Then things you can do as a chef, you can do many, 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 many things. You can travel the world, and you can work in the very, very small places, and you can work in the very, very high-end places. Um, you can work in the TV, you can develop farms, you can help people, you know, like to develop companies and taste around the world in the ice creams, from the ice creams example till the biggest companies, I don't know, burgers in the world. I mean, you have, it's a very big job. I mean, the work of the chef is not like only you cooking in the kitchen and that's it. There's so much For the potential. Other side, yes, exactly. You have like many things to do. This is depend about you. I think, Find start, start to be a chef, work very, very hard. And after that, you can explore in any direction you like in the world. Sounds so fantastic. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Chef uh, Spedhos. And that You're brings welcome. us to the end of our spotlight with Chef Spedhos. Where can we find you, Chef, if we want to reach out to you? Actually, at the moment, you can find me on my social media. Uh, as a Chef Spedhos, I have all my social media, like Instagram, YouTube channel. Because at the moment I'm doing consulting in Dubai and actually not in Dubai. Uh, I'm traveling around four to five countries in the world and I'm doing Greek pop-ups for Greek food because I'm ambassador of Greek food. Then the last days I'm doing um, so many projects as a consulting, like a Gulf food, like Formula One, different, different projects in Dubai. And if you want to find me, find me on my social media very soon. I cannot say at the moment where I'm going to be for the next season. But for sure, like who will gonna like, you know, to join my social media, he can find out where we're gonna be and everybody will gonna get informed in Dubai. I will gonna be with one of the most beautiful projects in Dubai. And I'm like so excited to start with them. But at the moment I'm doing many different projects. Very, very exciting. So watch this face as you were speaking. You can see in the link below where you can find Chef Spethos on Instagram and YouTube. And that's it. That brings us to the end of our spotlight in the days of Chef Spethos. And we learned all about his amazing uh, opportunities and all the amazing things that lay ahead of you. So if you are a young person watching this or a parent watching this, definitely want to learn a lot more about food technology and the culinary arts. Thank you for watching everybody. And we will see you again at our next Digital Spotlight.